persecution. In 759, the Bible says, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And in 60, he says, he kneeled down. He cried with a loud, loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to what? To their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now, remember, the soul don't sleep. It was his body that fell asleep. And what the Bible is trying to convey is, is that even while they was trying to stone him, God gave him such a peace. That when he laid down to die, he didn't die in torment and trouble. Because the comforts of Christ was with him. The grace of God was with him. The, the Messiah was once again with the martyr. And when, they, when he went to die, he just laid down like he was taking a nap. And his soul departed and went to be with Jesus. You see? Such comfort God gives us. Huh? And I got a word for Botham's mama. Huh? You know where your son is. And he's not in no soul sleep. You know he's not in no purgatory. Hallelujah. As soon, as soon as he closed his eyes, no matter what they tried to do to him here, as soon as he closed his eyes, he fell asleep. Huh? The comfort of Christ, the peace of God, he fell asleep. And he opened his eyes, looking into the eyes of his Savior. Woke up in nail-scarred hands. My God. In 8-1, and Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. As we look at 8.1, the Bible says Saul, who we know as Paul, was consenting unto the death. He was casting his vote. Yes, we should kill him, right? But this Saul who would become Paul, was in the right place at the right time. You see, Paul heard the prayer of Stephen. Paul saw the prayer of Stephen. And guess what? Paul was the answer to the prayer of Stephen. Anybody hearing me up in here? What did Stephen pray? Stephen prayed that God would save someone. And that God would not lay the sin of his martyrdom on somebody in that place. And God heard Stephen's prayer. Oh, God, have mercy. And who did God save? God saved Saul. He saved Paul. He heard. God did not lay Stephen's, his sin, the sin of murder of Stephen, on Paul's account. You see? He saved Paul, you see? With this one prayer, Stephen influenced the whole world 200 times over. You see, we like to talk about Paul having written the 13 letters. Y'all can put them up there for those that's new. The letters that Paul wrote. Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, huh? Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, all those letters. We see that and we see that we say, oh, wow. We think about all Paul's missionary journeys, the Cyrenian journey. Anybody hearing me up in here? And all the places he went and spread the gospel and planted churches. And we say, oh, what a mighty man Paul was. But what we seem to forget was that there was a prayer before there was a Paul. Oh, God have mercy. I... <laughs> Stephen prayed. And because of that prayer, two-thirds of our Bible was written. Because of that prayer, the nation of Rome was turned upside down. Augustine said it best, the one who they named St. Aug after the theologian. He says, if Stephen would not have prayed, the church would never have had the Apostle Paul. Oh, you got to give God some glory for that. I... <laughs> you see, the devil thought he was hurting the church when he took Stephen away. See, because in Stephen, the devil saw everything that he was scared of. He saw a prayer warrior. 
He saw, he saw a Holy Ghost feel, miracle working, preaching, boldness. I don't care who here, I'm telling them about Jesus. He saw all that in Stephen. He said, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. We ain't going to let this young man continue. We're going to have to take him away because this man going to be worse than Peter. He's going to be worse than John. He's going to be worse than Philip. He said, uh-uh, uh-uh, the church can't have this star player, hallelujah, along with the rest of the apostles in their arsenal. And the devil said, no, nah, we're going to hurt the church. We're going to stop the church in its tracks. We're going to hurt the church while helping the kingdom of darkness. We're going to get rid of Stephen. But Stephen's death did unspeakable good to the kingdom of God. And you got to understand that whatsoever the devil means for bad in the child of God's life, is always going to work together for your good. We see here Romans 8.28 coming out in living color, Miss Bridget, Kevin. The Bible says that, hallelujah, that we know, not we think, we know that what? All things. Did he say some things? All things. What you going through right now? What the devil doing to you right now? How does he have one of his claws on your neck right now? What are you doing to your marriage? What are you doing to your family? What are you doing to your finances? What are you doing to your health? What are you doing to your church? What are you doing to your people? What are you doing in Dallas? What is he doing in, 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 in Minnesota? What is the devil doing? What we have to know and rest on prophet. And we have to know that all things, not some things, but all things, they can't hurt us. They can't hurt us. We'll walk through the fire and not get burned. They can't hurt us. We'll stand before mountains and they won't move us. They can't hurt us. Why? Because we know that all things, they do what? They work together. For what? For good. To who? Them that love God. And that are called according to his purpose. Come on, give God some glory. I <laughs> he tried to hurt the church he tried to help his kingdom but when Stephen laid down and his blood was shed woo, hey God the devil only hurt himself you see I don't know about you but in your life the devil gonna try to hurt you but in the end he only gonna hurt himself you see what gonna break you only gonna make you stronger he only he only gonna hurt himself he only gonna Hurt himself when it's all said and done. You see, he hurt himself because Stephen's death raised up Paul. But not only that, Stephen's death and the bloodthirsty persecution that followed his martyrdom, huh? It did something else. In Acts 8 1, the Bible says, And Saul was consenting to his death, and at that time there was a great persecution you see when they start killing one it's hard to stop and so they killed Stephen but they, they went after all the rest of them and Stephen's death started a got a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem but look what happened because of Stephen's death and the persecution and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. Now stop right there. What you need to understand is that God had told them in Acts 1.8. He says, I'm giving you power. He said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses. Where did God want them to be witnesses? In Jerusalem? But watch this. These words sound familiar to you? In all Judea, and where else? And in Samaria. And where else? Into the uttermost part of the earth. Watch this closely now, Philly. The devil killed Stephen. And God raised up a Paul. Mm. <laughs> the devil started a great persecution. And through that, God started a great revival. Will anybody hear me up in here? Mm. They were scattered. See, the worst thing you could do in a fire that's small in a forest is for you to jump in it. 
hallelujah, or for you to throw something heavy in it. Because when you throw something too heavy in the fire, the embers, the sparks, the coals jump out. What the devil did to the Holy Ghost filled fire church in Jerusalem, he threw great persecution in it. But what he didn't know is you can't throw just anything on any fire. You better research what kind of fire you have. Be Oh, God. Because if you throw water on a grease fire, it's only going to make it where, oh, God. I'm. If you throw trouble in trial on a Holy Ghost fire, if you throw trouble in trial on a Holy Ghost believer, if you throw, if you throw trouble in trial on the people of the Most High, <laughs> you're only going to make the fire worse. The Bible tells us that when they threw the great persecution in, that the church that was in Jerusalem was scattered abroad. And when they were scattered, the fire that was confined to Jerusalem <laughs> began to spread to all Judea. And then when it burned up Judea, it began to spread to Samaria. And when it burned up Samaria, it began to spread to the uttermost part of the earth. And we in America right now, and the fire is still spreading because... <laughs> I got in my nose, Jen. I, I, I said, devil, you better stop. Come on, say that with me. Devil, devil. you better stop. He only going to make it worse for himself. In your life, in your children, children's lives, in the life of this church, but also in the life of us as a people, as the Hebrews. I got a word for him. Devil, you better stop. Devil, you better stop. Because you're shooting them innocent brothers. And you're thinking that you're going to break us. But you're not breaking us. All you're doing is making us. That's all you're doing is just working together for our good. <laughs> and listen, my heart hurt for Botham. My heart hurt for Trayvon. My heart hurt uh, uh, for Lando. My heart hurts for Elton. You understand what I'm saying? But while the devil is throwing his worst at us, God is throwing his best at us, and the dry bones are coming back to get, to get together. <laughs> Devil, you better stop. You better stop now. You better not kill another one of them. Because they're getting together in Dallas. They're getting together in Baton Rouge. And they're getting together in Lafayette. And they, hey, devil, you better stop. I'm, oh, yeah. They, they sending us email from London. They trying to get in touch with us from France. And listen, devil, you better. Um, he better cut it out. He better cut it out. Because God is not going to waste a single drop of the blood of his people. Not a single drop. Precious is the death of his saints to him. He not going to waste a single drop. And I got a word for Botham's loved ones, his people. Got a word, y'all. You got to hear me now. His brother's blood ain't going to be wasted. His brother's blood ain't going to be wasted. It's not going to be wasted. It's not going to be wasted. His mama, listen, mama, that blood ain't going to be wasted. Revival going to come from that blood. A fire going to come from that blood. A unity is going to come from that blood. I, the people, the people going to come from that blood. Our modern day Stephen. Our modern day Stephen. Oh God, you're wonderful. 
You're wonderful to speak to us in this text for such a time as this. He knows my name. Oh, how he walks with me. Oh, how he talks with me. I, oh, how he tells me that I am his own. 